Now, by plotting all of the isotopes that we have with their number of neutrons to the number of protons in the nucleus, what we have is this kind of curve of stability. But there are other isotopes which lie off this line, and it tends to be which the heavy ones, they give out alpha particles, uh, and as they do so, uh, that gets them closer to the line. We also get beta minus given out, and also beta plus. And by giving out these, uh, basically by giving out radiation, they become closer to the line. And if I'd like to look at this one here in a bit more detail. So when you have beta plus being emitted, what we get is inside the nucleus, we have a proton that ends up turning into a neutron. Uh, and as it does so, it also releases uh, a beta plus particle. Now, if we think about this in terms of charge, we've got something which has a charge of plus one, zero and plus one. So charge is conserved. Baryon number, well that's got a baryon number of 1 and that's got a baryon number of 1 and that's 0, so that's all good. When we consider the lepton number, we've got 0, 0 and this one here has got a lepton number of minus 1 because it's an antiparticle. So there has to be another lepton which is emitted, which in this case is an electron neutrino. But there's more and more way in which a proton can end up turning into a neutron and that's by what we call K capture or electron capture. So this proton captures an electron, it turns into a neutron, and in order to conserve lepton number, because we've got uh, a lepton number of plus one here, we also then have a lepton number of plus one over here. So an electron is captured by the nucleus of an element, uh, and this tends to be the elements down here, which, would, uh, which basically are proton heavy, and they don't have enough neutrons. So the proton number goes down by one, and the neutron number goes up by one. Uh, and in doing so, it also releases an electron neutrino and often some other kind of form of energy in the form of radiation. Now, a great example of that, and there are many here, is carbon-11. Now, carbon-11 has uh, six protons. I'm using the yellow Lego to be my proton, so it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, which means it must be carbon. In this case, it also has one, two, three, four, five of the red ones. Uh, and so there are 11 nucleons in total. There are five neutrons and six protons, so it's kind of proton heavy. And what happens is, is that uh, basically it captures one of the electrons from the inner shell, and the inner shell is also known as the K shell, which is also what's called K capture. And effectively one of these things here, basically uh, as it goes uh, near to the nucleus, it gets captured by a proton. The proton turns into a neutron, and what we then have is a different element. So if we think about that, uh, carbon-11 uh, is basically this, um, we have an electron which is grabbed by that, uh, and then this means that we only now have five protons left. If we look at our periodic table, we find that this is uh, boron. There are still 11 nucleons there, we've still got the same amount. Uh, and also, um, an electron neutrino is given off. And what happens then is at some time, uh, one of these uh, electrons in the outer shell is going to move back down, it might give out a packet of energy as it does so, and then we again have our full inner shell of two, and then we have our outer shell of three. So that's K capture, and it's just another way that an element can change from one form to another to become more stable uh, and give out some kind of particles. Thank you. If you like that video, I've got plenty more on my Year 13 channel, so maybe subscribe by clicking up here for your free trial, or maybe have a look at the video here uh, to find out a bit more. Thank you.